This video is about a kind of eye surgery called vitrectomy that is used to repair several common problems inside the eye. This video is number three in our series about the vitreous. Vitrectomy is a versatile eye surgery that is used both to remove the vitreous from the eye and to address multiple other problems inside the eye. Let us begin with some background. The vitreous is the jelly that fills the hollow space in the center of the eye. In the first video, we looked at its structure in some detail. In the second video, we looked at the changes that happen over time. Specifically, one, within the vitreous body, pockets of jelly start to liquefy, shown as the dark patches at the arrows. And two, the vitreous progressively separates from its attachments to the retina. These two changes within the vitreous cause one set of problems which range from nuisance, like floaters, to significant, like macular hole. Then there is another set of problems like hemorrhage and formation of scar tissue that also involves the vitreous. Vitrectomy is a versatile tool used to address many of those problems. This illustration shows an eye mostly filled with blood. This could happen as a result of, for example, bleeding from diabetic retinopathy. Blood intermingled in the vitreous is very slow to clear. Not only does it block vision, but it obscures the ability of the retina specialist to see in to treat the underlying problem. Clearing a vitreous hemorrhage was one of the original reasons for developing vitrectomy surgery. Floaters are a very common problem. Those cloudy patches in your vision come from liquefying vitreous and clumping of the collagen fibers. In video two, we discussed vitreous pulling on the retina. If it happens in the central retina, at the fovea, it can pull a hole called a macular hole. The pulling, or traction, is seen here on OCT scan. Another problem can develop if, when the vitreous pulls away from the retina, it leaves a remnant on the surface. That remnant may form a sheet or a membrane called an epiretinal membrane. This membrane tends to contract, which causes the retina to wrinkle. Easy to see on an OCT scan. Here is an alternate situation where the vitreous remnant is on one side of the fovea. When it contracts, it pulls on the fovea horizontally, another mechanism for creating a macular hole. Here, seen on OCT scan. The front of the eye is not immune to the effects of vitreous pulling. In this case, normal movement of the eye causes the gel to pull on the peripheral retina. If it pulls hard enough, it can create a retinal tear, leading to a retinal detachment. The problems we just listed are typically treated by a vitrectomy. Vitreous plus ectomy equals surgical removal of the vitreous. Here is the setup. This is the surgeon's view looking down through the operating microscope at the eye with lid retractors already in place. The surgery starts with placement of an infusion cannula which pumps saline into the eye to keep it inflated while you are working. Second is to place a fiber optic probe which brings light into the eye so you can see what you are working on. Third is to place the vitrector, the instrument that is doing the work. It takes little bites of the vitreous jelly and sucks them out of the eye. A side view of vitrectomy surgery works better to see what is going on inside the eye. On the left is the vitrector and on the right is the fiber optic light. The infusion cannula is not shown. Here we are showing the vitreous gradually being cleared out from inside the eye. One question I get a lot is, what is used to replace the vitreous? The answer is usually saline, which works quite well, though there is current experimental work on other vitreous replacements. Now let's look at how vitrectomy is used to treat the problems we discussed. We started by discussing vitreous hemorrhage as the motivation for developing vitrectomy surgery. Here we can see the vitrector clearing out the vitreous and the hemorrhage with it. That not only restores vision for the patient, but it allows a view in for the retina specialist. Of lesser but still significant impact are floaters. In some people, they are quite bothersome. A vitrectomy can clear out those cloudy clumps of vitreous. The question here, and with the following surgeries, is whether the impairment in vision is sufficiently bothersome to be worth the risk of surgery. 
While vitrectomy surgery is low risk, it is not no risk. Though rare, it is possible to lose vision from a complication, so that has to be taken into consideration. Returning to the eye with the vitreous traction on the fovea. Surgery starts by removing the central vitreous. One can then move the vitrector a little deeper to engage and remove the vitreous that is pulling on the macula. This directly solves the traction problem. Vision improvement depends on how damaged the fovea had become before surgery. In the eye with the wrinkling caused by the epiretinal membrane, once again the central vitreous is removed, allowing access to the membrane on the surface of the retina. With special, very fine forceps, one can delicately grab the edge of the membrane, peel it off the retina, and remove it from the eye. That allows the retina to smooth back out, hopefully improving vision. Repair of retinal detachment is covered in detail in a separate video. Here we will just mention the highlights. There are three standard ways of repairing a retinal detachment, depending on its size and location. Scleral buckle, pneumatic or gas bubble, and vitrectomy. With a detachment, there are, two, there are two principal issues that have to be dealt with. One is the fluid that has accumulated under the retina, which is separating the photoreceptors from the pigment cells. Two is the pulling of the vitreous on the retinal tear, which has to be relieved or the repair will not be successful. Each of the repair techniques aims to get the retina back in position against the eye wall and weld it so it will stay put. Let's see how these issues are addressed from inside the eye with vitrectomy. Here again, vitrectomy surgery is used to clear out the central vitreous, which directly removes the traction on the tear. It also permits direct access to the subretinal fluid, which gives the option of draining internally. With traction relief, the retina can be welded to the eye wall with either laser or cryo treatment. Finally, a gas bubble can be instilled to hold the retina in place and keep the tear closed while the spot welds have a chance to form a strong enough adhesion. In this case, vitrectomy allows for repair of the retinal detachment entirely from the inside of the eye without requiring placement of a scleral buckle. In summary, surgical vitrectomy is a versatile tool for repairing several intraocular problems. The ability to remove the vitreous is a direct solution to the problem of an eye filled with blood, and likewise for floaters if they are enough of a bother. We can use it to address macular traction slash holes and epiretinal membranes. Lastly, in repair of retinal detachment, vitrectomy can address two of the three main issues. In this video, I have covered the common problems and general techniques addressed by vitrectomy but there are other problems and variations in technique. There is more information about the vitreous in videos 1 and 2, and there is a separate video on repair of retinal tear and detachment. Here are selected references if you want to read further.